Oh, hey, um, didn't see you there. How long have you been waiting? Sorry for the mess, I just finished reading Forbidden Scrollery and I have to say, this might be the best Toe manga for me. There are lots of good points to it, but if I had to say, the best part of it are the characters. Kosuzu, Aku, Marisa and Reimu. All of them are very well developed and you attach yourself very quickly to them, especially Kosuzu and her naive tea. If you haven't read it yet, I'd advise you do so. It's honestly a very very good read. But there's something that kind of surprised me when I was looking at the people's opinion on this manga, at least on Yen Press's official release. People were complaining about the translation, more importantly, about some of the names, like for example, Atano Kokoro becoming Kokoro Atano. And while I can understand why people will make a fuss about misnaming characters, I was instead more intrigued as to why. Why did the name Atano Kokoro became Kokoro Atano? So I started digging and instead, as always, I got lost and ended up looking why there were name discrepancies in two games to begin with. Why do people fight over names and how should they be pronounced? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a dip into literature. Let's see together why there are name discrepancies in two games. So, before we start, I just want to throw in a disclaimer. I am not proficient in Japanese, which means that I could do some mistakes on some occasions. Just know that I've done as much research as I could. If there are some mistakes, please let me know. Now, I'm going to go through them by categories. I don't want you to doze off, obviously. I'll also be counting the discrepancies found in print works. So, first, let's start by talking about a group of discrepancies, which represents the majority of them. And I was trying to find a cool way to name the group, but hey, let's say that I'm not good at naming. Let's talk about the victims of romanization. Well, not really victims, but if I want to explain what happened to their names, I need to explain a couple of things about the process of romanization. But let's divide all the characters who fall under this category into sub-category first. We have the she and she category, the G and Z category, the Tsu and Tu category, and the Fu and Hu category. Alright, now that we have our sub-categories, let's explain the process of romanization. Romanization, in simple terms, is translating a language so that it can be pronounced by foreigners who uses the Roman alphabet. Nothing new, you might say, but what's less known is that there are two ways to romanize words from Japanese to any other languages. Well, actually, three, but let's focus on two. The first one, and the most well known, is the Hepburn romanization. Now, I won't explain everything about it, especially since it would be way too long to explain. But just note that this system has two versions, the oldest one created in 1886, and the modified or more recent one published in 1908. This is also the one used to translate to a game as well, and surely it works fine. Although most of the games were translated by Occidentals. Why am I pointing that out? Because the other way to romanize Japanese, the Kunreishiki romanization, is easier to deal with for Japanese speakers. Using a modified version of the Nihonshiki romanization, it's much closer to the way the Japanese people speak. Since some sounds in Japanese uses the same kana, Kunreishiki makes it harder for non-native speakers to pronounce it. If you want a simple example, just take Fujiwara no Moko. Here's our name Hineraganas. Using the Hepburn romanization, the name would be Fujiwara no Moko. It wouldn't change at all. Though, using Kunreishiki, the name would be transcribed as Yudziwara no Moko. But it would be pronounced the same way because of the phonem from Fu and Hu, or G and Z, being the same. To us, though, it would seem completely wrong to replace syllable with others. In this context, however, both writings are technically correct, so only one pronunciation is, as the kanji still indicates how to pronounce it. Differences with kana between Hepburn and Kunreishiki in two games include Shikeiki Yamazanadu, Shizuha Haki, Nitori Kawashiro, Parsi Mizuashi, and Sagume Kishin for the she and si difference, Yuriko Sayuji, Fujiwara no Moko, Momiji Inubashiri, Utsuore Yuji, Byakure Nijiri, and Soga no Tojiko for the G and Z difference, Gengetsu, Mugetsu, 
Minamitsu Murasa and Mamizu Futatsuwa for the Tsu and Tu difference, Fujiwara Namoko and Mamizu Futatsuwa for the Fu and Hu difference, and finally, Chiyori Kitashirasawa and Sanae Kochiya for the Chi and Ti difference. Phew, this was kind of hard to explain. I hope I didn't get confused into my own ramblings. But we're not done yet, are we? Indeed, we're missing one or two characters that could fit into the category. These one being Komachi and Shingeku. Let's start with the hardest, Komachi. Her name, Onozuka, can also be written Onoduka in some print works, as well as in Phantasmagoria of Flower View. This comes from the fact that using the base for Kunleishiki's romanization, the Neon Shiki one, the kana for Zu in Onozuka becomes a Du. Nihon Shiki isn't used as widely anymore, but the only question that remains is, why was it preferred over the newer romanization processes? Some will say that this is because of the fact that this system is the closest to Japanese, but the fact that it was replaced by Kunleishiki doesn't explain why it was used here, though it explains why it could have been written that way. Then we get to Shingyoku. Its case is not as complex, but still interesting. The problem here does reside in romanization, but only because the only place where we can find its name is in To One's credits, in Roman letters. Since by this point you might know that depending on the type of romanization used, the writing of a word might change, I think you can see the problem. When creating the word in Japanese so that it could pronounce it correctly, the two methods made so it could be pronounced either Shin or Sin Goku. The keyword here is the lack of information. There's no real way to know which one is correct or not, whether Zun made a mystique or not. As always, the one is full of holes. So, we're done now, right? What do you mean we're not done? <sighs> Alright, I do believe we've done the meat of the subject. But there's still more to go, so let's do it. Next on the list are Ayashimei Maru and Shaotora Maru. The problem stays fundamentally the same here, so why are they none of a category? Well, although it's still a problem between Hepburn and Kurneishiki, the problem here doesn't come from a kana in particular, but rather an association of kanas. A yawn, to be more exact, which you can see as the Japanese version of diphthongs. Working with three main sounds, ya, yo, and you, you then add each phonemes as you would do with regular kanas. For our example, it would take the sound s and then add it to each main sound, leading to xia, sho, and shu. However, this method only works with the Kunreishiki romanization, and this is where the Hepburn one differs a bit. Some of the yons are modified to be easier to pronounce. The Xia one is part of that modified group, becoming Sha instead. This is why their name became Shamei Maru and Sha instead of Xiamei Maru and Xiao, so the names couldn't be mispronounced. Next up, we have Tewi Inaba and Tenshi Nanawi. Huh, what a weird pairing. Not so weird if you consider the writing, in fact. And bonus points for me because this time it has nothing to do with two romanization methods clashing to see which one is the best. Rather, the problem here comes from the kana used in Tewi and Inanawi, the Wi kana. This kana is not used at all nowadays in modern Japanese and is instead replaced by the kana for E. Though the kana is still present in literature and is translated as we in most cases. The pronunciation here varies depending on the country you're in. Simply put, you can't say te we in Japan as they wouldn't understand it. Alright, I believe we've gone through most of it. So let's pick up the pace, continuing with yuka and yugi which can sometimes be seen with only one u instead of two. Strange, isn't it? What makes this happen? Well, ironically, I haven't found much about this. Some people know that in order to contract a double vowel, you need to put a macron over it, or a circumflex accent in the case of Kunleishiki, leaving only one U pronounced as an elongated one. However, the problem is that on the wiki entry for both Yuka and Yugi, the other writings are written without a macron. So what gives? Well, after a bit more research, I found out that it's possible to not indicate the macrons at all. 
which would explain their names written with only one U, but this rule only usually applies for Japanese words that are used in English, like sushi for example. Although there are many more variations of the Hepburn romanization, which is why Kunleishiki exists in the first place. And although I'm not too sure about it, this seems like the best explanation for me. There are also a couple of translation mistakes when dealing with names, and so is no difference. For example, you might know that sometimes they do mistakes because of the phonome for L not being present in Japanese, and that it sounds very similar to R for them. There are a few names who are the target of this, for example, Flandre sometimes becomes Frandre or Frandre, Nazrin becomes Nazlin, and Mei Ling becomes Mei Rin. This is not uncommon, but still something I wanted to point out, as most of those mistakes go over people's head, since they mostly appear in print works. And for the last major category, there will still be some afterwards, but I didn't really find a fitting category for them. Here we have the possessive discrepancies. Our participants are Ata no Kokoro and Yeda no Akyu. Or should I say Kokoro Atano and Akyu Yeda no? Well, it's not a big difference anyway. What do you mean it is? It would be a big deal if the name got rid of the possessive in fact, no? Of course, the first and last name being reversed is easy to explain. In Japanese, people will say their last name first. For example, you wouldn't say Marisa Kirisame, but Kirisame Marisa. The main problem for people resides in the fact that in occidental countries, you don't say that you belong to a family with a possessive. Even if it's noble, you just say that you are part of this family. In that case, shouldn't it be Kokorohata and Akuyeda, like the wiki indicates? And I can't count that as means translation either, since they're also written that way in Opless Masquerade and Urban Legend in Limbo. So, once again, what gives? Okay, let's try to explain that for each character, starting with Kokoro. The reason why her name might be written that way is because the Atano, although written in Uragana first, can also be written with the following kanji, with the no being a part of the kanji itself, according to the manual of Opless Masquerade and Urban Legend in Limbo. The kanji chin was also used in the surname of the original user of the mask that Kokoro now has, Ata no Kawakatsu, which would explain why they kept the no in her name in Forbidden Scrollery. But what about Akyu? On the other hand, I would say that the Yeda no was kept for the meaning of the name, as Yeda no Akyu can literally be translated as little girl in the ninth generation of the Yeda clan. Truly, the sense would have been kept if the no wasn't there, because of what I explained earlier. So I guess, in a sense, both of them are correct. Yeah, if someone can enlighten me here, I gladly take notes. Lastly, I have those whom I couldn't fit into any category. We have John, which was written as John in the translation patch of To 15.5. Technically, both writings are right, but then how do you pronounce it? If we take the etymology of her name, John comes from the image John, the name of the dizzy fleabane in Japanese. A related flower, the Harujion, is also the base for Xion's name, hence the title of the game, Antinomy of Common Flowers. If we take this as a basis, then the name is pronounced Jion. And finally, we have Mei Ling. Wait, didn't we cover her already? We did, but there's also another spelling in perfect memento in strict sense. In this hot book, she's named... Huan Mei Ling? I mean, we already got the mailing part down, but... Huan? I mean, her name in Chinese gives us Hong, and translated into Iraganas, this gives us Hon. So why did an A slip in there? It's honestly, by far, the weirdest discrepancy i found, and since it only appears once, and she's not referred by this name anywhere else, I guess it has something to do with pronunciation, but I couldn't find anything in the wikis or any article I've been through. So, once again, if someone has a plausible explanation, I'll be happy to hear it. And we are at the end of the list! Hooray! So, in the end, why did I bother making this video, you may be asking? Like every ignorant story, there's no real reasoning to it, I just found it to be a fascinating subject. 
Just think about it. If those discrepancies exist, this is because languages are so rich, yet so different. They have many ways to express a single need, and learning those different ways to express yourself is what makes it way, way more interesting. I just want to thank the translators for giving us a way to understand Toe games. I realize now that's in no way an easy task to give a sense to a foreign language, and that this common knowledge is truly what makes this game beautiful. Well, since we're done, I'll go back and read the other Toe manga. Just take your time and subscribe to the channel if you are new and interested in more. I always like people who want to discuss. I won't tell you what to do, I mean, you know what the like button does. But with that, I wish you all a merry summer and I'll see you in the next video that will probably be released in the next century. See you everyone!